Kia orana. I'm uh, Andy Kirkwood from uh, Avana Vedava in Rarotonga, Cook Islands. And uh, behind me is the uh, Avana Vedava nursery and uh, demonstration site. Avana Vedava is the name under which I do the primarily the, the Vedava specification and the nursery. And then the food production is just switching to that at the moment. So it's been about six, seven months of adapting from the focus on a vetiver and a vetiver demonstration site so I can show people how this works to um, using the vetiver as the foundation for syntropic food production. So in syntropics, grass is used as a nutrient input now. So the grass is cut and then distributed and you're looking at making a mix of uh, ground crops and then tree crops with the grass as, as sort of a, an intermediary between the two, harvesting the grass and putting that around the trees. So food production day one is to support our own family, our own community. So that's the priority. Um, the benefit of the close planting with this particular type of grass is it has an incredibly dense and deep uh, root system. So it goes down three meters and it's not fine and it's not coarse. It's a perfect match between, or it moderates between a very fine and very coarse material in that it stabilizes that soil. So when people are doing things like building a house out of block work, they'll set out a foundation with blocks and then they'll use reinforcing rods through those and then pour concrete because concrete is strong in terms of resisting gravity but steel is strong in terms of resisting shear sideways forces so when we're doing conventional construction we combine two materials one that is strong uh, in terms of sideward forces and one that resists downward in the case of how vetiver is used on this hillside uh, the reinforcing rod of the roots and the concrete is the ground that we have here and in this case this is um, volcanic clay soils. The, the Vetiva nursery was already um, started but COVID encouraged me to expand it, to plant more, more of the grass out and to really focus on um, encouraging people to also do what I was doing. Mm. Um, there was also that with a lack of income, the ideas of using uh, the vetiver became more attractive to people as well. So in terms of costs, if you're trying to do something equivalent to what vetiver can do with um, conventional construction materials, it'd be hugely expensive. Vetiver would be something that people could start to do either themselves or at about an eighth the price of what they would have to do if they were paying for that, that type of work. Um, and then the, the food thing is just, this year has become even, even more of a concern. So uh, we've got inflation of about 20%, I think. Um, it's like $10 for a loaf of bread and the hourly, hourly um, minimum wage is about $9. Mm. So it's, it's just meant that our dependence as a country on imported foods and imports in general um, is a real vulnerability and, and we our, our quality of life is directly impacted by that vulnerability and the ways that we can offset it is to grow more food ourselves. This hillside was started in 2017. The Syntropic thing I would date back to just last year, so 2022. Um, yeah, and the nursery from about 2019. So, yeah, those that's the, the points in time. 2017, finding out about the grass and starting for my own purposes growing. 2019, looking at wider community use of the grass. And then 2022, looking at using or leveraging the grass in food production. So that's, that's kind of the process. So I approached the, this, project with the, uh, the vetiver grass to try and expand it with the technical dimension as well of, of surveying in order to put it in place and the response one of the responses I had 
in terms of it was that there was no need, there was no demand. So this is an interesting position to be in if you're innovating, okay? Key to innovation is a lack of uptake of what is new, right? You can't have a market for things people don't know exist yet. Thank you.